Hello, friends. My name is Dallas Dwight. Welcome to the Musicians Talk Show. This is episode number 17. My guest today, I first met at a tribute show festival. He's the drummer for the Red Knot Chili Peppers. Brilliant name. Brilliant band. They crushed it. Chili Peppers, one of my favorite bands. They did such a great job. I was immediately struck by how awesome this guy was. His name is Steve Such. Amazing drummer. And um, I've always loved Chad Smith. And he did Chad Smith so well. I had to talk to him. So after the show, went up and talked to him. He was such a nice guy. And um, after I started the podcast, decided to ask him to come on the show. And he agreed. What an awesome guy. He's doing a lot of great things now, and um, I'm going to let him talk about it more so than me. So let's get right into it. Steve Such, episode 17. Doing well. What's going on out there? Nice. Oh, not much. I'm uh, I'm in Central Park right now. Oh, nice. You're in New York. Yeah. Is that where you're uh, living now, or? Um, for the time being, I'm uh, I'm playing drums for Rock of Ages right now. Oh, nice. How'd you get that gig? Um. Oh man, it's uh, it's kind of a long story, but yeah, it's uh, kind of just kind of just happened, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Just, um, the but, drummer backed out at the last second and then I kind of got it, but yeah, man, how are you doing? I, 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 I forget like exactly how we met. Um, we met at that, um, uh, Alabama amphitheater doing that tribute festival thing. Oh, nice. That's, that's right. Yeah. That was an awesome show. Yeah. That was an awesome show. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I actually wanted to talk yeah. to you about, um, who kind of what your thoughts are on tribute bands. I mean, being in one yourself, you have a more unique perspective than most people. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love, uh, um, you know, being in a tribute band. It's definitely not something that I ever thought that I would be doing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when I went to music school, I, I never thought, you know, my teacher never said, hey, like you could, you know, be in a tribute band someday. Um, so it's kind of funny how life works out. But, uh, you know, this opportunity kind of presented itself. And um, yeah, it's an amazing experience. You know, the guys in the band are great. and We get to do a lot of travel and um you know it's just it's just i can't complain at all it's just a really really fun gig so Mm -hmm. what's it like touring um in that kind of situation yeah it's really fun um you know a little bit about us we're kind of unique in the fact that um all four of us we have kind of different things going on so um you know for example like the bassist he's uh he's actually a nuclear engineer for the navy so you know he's got a full-time gig um, our singer, he's, uh, he owns a, a fitness company. He owns kind of his own startup. And so he's really busy with that. And, you know, Mark is, is a musician. I'm, uh, you know, a full-time musician as well. So we all kind of have different things going on. And because of that, we're not really able to kind of do a full-time, uh, touring schedule. Um, we basically for the past few years, we've been, um, kind of traveling on the weekends, which has actually been really nice. It's been kind of fun because, we can do our own thing, you know, in San Diego and, um, and then, you know, maybe Thursday or Friday we fly out to wherever we're going to go that weekend. And, you know, we have an awesome time out wherever we are. And, and then we come back and, and, and go back to uh, sunny San Diego. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's actually a really cool kind of uh, situation. You know, I, I almost prefer it to, to the, you know, the constant traveling kind of thing. So, um, it's kind of a nice balance. Yeah, definitely. How did you guys actually, um, start that band? Well, uh, I actually kind of joined the band a little bit later. So the, the Red Knot Chili Peppers, uh, um, as a band, it's, it's been around for about seven, maybe eight years, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jonathan Savage, who's the, the, again, he's the bassist, um, he started the whole thing. It's, it's his baby. Um, he's kind of been there from day one. It was his idea. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's been different kind of lineups along the way. And and, you know, I, I joined about maybe three years ago. Um, and it's actually kind of interesting how it came about. Um, it was completely random. Uh, I was just on Craigslist of all things at like 3 p.m. on a, on a, you know, I was at work and it was like 3 p.m. I had like an hour left to go in my shift. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll just check out 
uh, Craigslist because, you know, I had just moved to San Diego. I didn't really know anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you know, eager to play. And I saw a Craigslist ad. And basically, um, the the drummer at the time, he kind of, uh, he just kind of left town, like, immediately. And it was kind of a weird situation. Um, and so they had a, a tour coming up that weekend, and they needed a drummer, you know, as soon as possible because it was kind of a big show. And so they had kind of a cattle call audition. And that was like the first one I've ever done where, you know, there's just like all these drummers like kind of waiting outside. And, you know, it was kind of a, an interesting experience. And, um, you know, I had to prepare a few tunes and um, I walked in and, you know, I was prepared and, and I did it and it worked out. And, and the next thing you know, like a couple of days later, I'm I'm out with them and, you know, I had to learn like 20 tunes. Uh, you know, luckily I knew most of the tunes, but, you know, um, but yeah, man, it's just kind of crazy how it works. Like if I hadn't gone on Craigslist, you know, like randomly, I, I probably wouldn't have seen that. And, you know, my life is, has completely changed because of that. So it's mm-hmm. kind of weird how life works, you know? Yeah, definitely. How do you approach learning a large number of songs in a short amount of time? Oh, man, that's a great question. I, I love this question because um, I feel like a lot of people, especially in the kind of the, the rock genre or whatever they don't they don't really do this but um i'm a huge fan of charts i love charts i know it's kind of a you know there's there's mixed feelings about it um but for me i feel like it's so so efficient to do charts and that's how i survived that that weekend you know i told you i um basically i auditioned like on a wednesday and then on friday i was you know i was doing it so there's no way that i could have gotten through that gig if i didn't make some sort of a you know, reference sheet. So like, I'm not making full, you know, detailed charts of every single note, but what I do is I kind of make, uh, structured charts that make sense to me. You know, it doesn't really have to make sense to anyone else, but as long as it makes sense to me, um, you know, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I just, I can't say enough about, uh, chart writing. It's, it's saved me, um, on, you know, so many times and it's also allowed me to do so many more gigs, you know, like there's, there's corporate, corporate gigs that come up all the time. And it's like, Hey man, like we have this like two hour set and it pays this much. Can you do it? You know, like our drummers out of town. And I feel like the fact that you, you know, I, I, I can write out a, a, you know, a chart. Um, it really allows me to be able to, to kind of succeed at that gig. And I, I feel like, um, you know, a lot of people think, Oh, like you should learn everything by ear. Um, which is totally true. But at the same time, you know, if you want to be a working musician, uh, I think sometimes it's really important to be able to have those kind of shortcuts, Mm -hmm. um, at least in your toolbox, just in case you need it. So, um, yeah, I love that question just because I feel like I'm I'm really, you know, I'm a huge fan of the the whole charts thing. I I just think it makes things so much more efficient. So how do you approach these these, writing these charts? I mean, what would one of them look like, maybe, for example? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I try to kind of keep it as minimal as possible because, um, you know, I don't want, I mean, unless it's a really, really, uh, kind of complicated tune, um, I just kind of want to have a basic structure. Um, so what I will do is it's more of like a form chart and I will, it's, it's, it's kind of, I have a, you know, a set way that I do it, but, um, you know, if it's a verse, I'll write the letter V, you know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's just, this is kind of like how I do it. So right. I, you know, like V for verse and I'll, and I'll, I'll label it. So like V one would be verse one. Um, PC would be pre-chorus, um, you know, C for chorus, uh, B for bridge. Um, and then, you know, if there's like a guitar solo, I might just write guitar solo. Um, and I'll usually write the number of bars underneath that. So if you imagine like a a sheet of paper, I'll draw kind of like a line and I'll do, you know, let's say V1 and then underneath that I'll write like eight. And that tells me that it's going to be eight bars. Um, and then I know kind of what's going on. And then Mm -hmm. like texturally on the drums, I always try to include some sort of like information. So like, um, you know, on the top left of the chart, let's say it's like a funk tune. I'm going to write like funky or like some, some like word that gets me in that vibe. Because again, if I'm on that corporate gig and there's like 30 tunes, like, you know, maybe I I just need that like refresher. I need, I need to know like, Oh, this is the vibe that I'm going to be doing for this song. Um, so I try to give myself that information. Um, you know, I, I also include like hi-hat or like a ride cymbal or, 
Um, you know, if there's like a really important bass drum pattern, I'll make sure I actually write that out. Um, you know, any hits in the tunes, I always write that out. Um, so, you know, it's, it's useful to have those kind of like, um, you know, being able to read music is, is really important because of, again, things like that, where, um, it would take you hours and hours to learn these tunes. If you can just write it out and transcribe it and then read it on a gig, you know, you're, you're just saving a lot of time. So yeah. that, that helps, that helps me, you know? Yeah, exactly. How, how long until, um, would you say until you just throw the charts away? Cause you've got it down. Well, that kind of depends. So, you know, if it's, if it's, again, we're kind of talking about these, like, you know, these corporate party band kind of gigs, um, for that, you know, it might just be a one-time thing. And yeah, exactly. So what I'll do is I'll, you know, I'll bring the charts to the gig, I'll read it. And then I just kind of put it away in a, in a file. And then, you know, when I get a call for something else, then I, you know, see if I have the chart already. So I kind of, I just kind of build a, a, a list of tunes and, you know, hopefully like, you know, I have it already. And, and if I don't, then I'll, then I'll write it out. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, ideally the idea is to be able to get off of the ch- charts. Um, and you know, like with the, with going back to the red, not chili peppers, I use charts, which looking back on it now, I kind of laugh about it because, you know, it's a, it's like a chili peppers tribute band. Like, um, but you know, it's what I needed to do with like two days notice, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just really important to, to be able to get off the chart as soon as possible. And, so that you're interacting with the band and and the audience, you know. Yeah, definitely. You entered a uh, Chad Smith drum contest, right? Oh yeah, yeah. How'd that? Uh, yeah, how'd that, that was go? that was oh that was really really fun. I I just I heard about it through a friend, um, kind of randomly. Um, she I think she had just like shared something on her Facebook wall or something, and I just happened to see it. And yeah, I mean it was like the perfect contest because I had just joined the the tribute band. And I was really diving into the Ch- Chad Smith thing, trying to like, you know, really kind of hone in on that. And then this contest came up and it was, I was like, hell yeah, I gotta, I gotta do this. So, um, it was a really cool experience. Um, you know, it was, it was put on by drum channel, mm-hmm. uh, which is a really cool, uh, kind of educational company. Um, it's like a subscription service, uh, for drummers and yeah, it was great. Like, um, they had like a first round where it was voting um, and then, and then there was like a final round where they had different guys, uh, you know, like Chad and, and I think Steven Perkins, um, from Jane's addiction, he was part of the panel. So they had like a panel of drummers and they judged it and they had like a, a TV show. It was kind of like, uh, I don't know. It was kind of like American Idol or something where they'd like play your, you know, you'd, they'd, you'd have the performance and then they'd kind of like talk about it and like rip you apart and stuff. And it was great. You know, it was, it was really cool. So nice. Where'd you uh, actually end up in that? Well, I made it to the top 10, um, which was exciting. But then, uh, you know, that I didn't, I didn't like win or anything like that, but I, I got to the top 10 and that's awesome. Um, yeah. And I was, I was really just happy with the whole experience. I, I learned a lot from it, you know, mm-hmm. um, just recording a video and it was like the first like multi-cam thing that I'd ever done. And I, I'd always wanted to do something like that. And, um, you know, just playing to a track and, and just, you know, all those things, like, it's always like a learning experience, you know, everything you do is like, just, you learn and then you grow. And, you know, now when I watch the video, I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe like I did this and this and this, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I would have done this so much different, but at the time that's where I was at. And, and it's just, it's cool. You know, it's, everything is a learning experience. What are your, uh, some of your opinions on musical contests just in general? Ooh, man, that's a, that's a good question, man, because I feel like it's, it's kind of like, it's like a great thing and it's also like the worst thing ever. Mm-hmm. And I guess what I mean by that is like, like, obviously like music is not a competition at all. Like everyone is different and everyone has their own voice and everyone has their vibe and what they bring to the table. And it's like, who, who's like the guy that can be like, yes, this is like, you know, this is number two and this is number three. Like, it's just the whole idea of that is kind of, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a little strange, but Mm -hmm. with that said, you know, I've been trying to enter these different contests because, you know, it's, it's an experience and it's, it's kind of a way to, maybe get some, you know, more exposure or at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, you know, it's better than doing nothing. Like it's, um, 
it's exciting and it challenges me and it's, it kind of gives me a deadline. So like, you know, a contest will come up and, and then I'll, you know, I'll go into the studio and record it and then do the video editing. And it's like, it's like a project, you know? And, yeah. um, so in, in that aspect, in that regard, like it's, it's a really cool thing. It's, it's a great experience, you know, for yourself and, and, uh, and then you get some cool, like, you know, promo out of it or whatever. So there's like benefits to it, but again, kind of back to the, just like, like philosophically, you know, I, I think some people get caught up in like, what is the best? And like, you know, who is the best this? And, and I don't think that music should necessarily be approached that way. I think we all have something to bring to the table. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You mentioned uh, earlier, you're doing the rock of ages thing. Um, how, how exactly did you go about getting that? Yeah. So <laughs> this is kind of an interesting, uh, kind of thing. Um, I, I actually worked, um, I'm trying to think of how, how far back I should go with this, but, but basically, um, this rock of ages, uh, experiences, it's, it's a totally unique kind of thing. Um, it's actually on board the Norwegian breakaway. It's a cruise ship out of New York. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's really cool because all of the guys that we're working with, like in, in this group, the, the cast and the musicians and, um, kind of the staff, they're all from different, um, different versions of rock of ages. So there's a lot of the Broadway guys, um, the, the, for those of you who don't know the rock of ages, it's one of the longest running like Broadway shows of all time. And it just, it just closed down in Broadway. Um, I believe in February. And so, you know, there's some Broadway guys, uh, in, in the band and in the cast, there's also some Vegas guys. The, the Vegas show is still running. Um, there's a guy from the Toronto tour, there's a guy or there's a few guys from uh, the national tour that kind of goes around the country. So um, it's a really cool experience because, you know, not only is it on a cruise ship, which is kind of fun, but, um, you know, we're getting to work with some really badass people like from all over. And it's just a really cool vibe. Uh, we just opened a couple weeks ago. So I think this was our second week uh, that we just finished up. And um, it's just it's an amazing experience. So anyway, back to to kind of how I got it, it, it just, uh, it was just kind of one of those things like the, there was a drummer kind of scheduled to do this and he wasn't able to do it at the last minute. And, um, you know, I, luckily I, I guess the, so, you know, um, I was, I was called and, and, and I was available and, and I, you know, it was, it was, it was difficult cause I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing with the red knot chili peppers at the moment and it's, being, you know, leaving that group for six months, that was kind of a a difficult decision. Um, but I'm really happy, you know, I, I wanted, I've been doing it for, for three years and I was kind of ready to, you know, uh, this opportunity came up and, and I thought, well, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I packed up all my stuff, all my stuff's in storage right now. You know, I, I miss San Diego a lot, but, um, but I'm having a really good time out here and and the musicians are, are really, really great. So I'm excited, man. Yeah, how was the move from um, San Diego to New York? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it was kind of it all happened really, really fast because I, I found out about the gig um, maybe with a month's notice, and to kind of complicate things um, with the Red Knots, we we actually went to Tokyo um, about three weeks ago, I want to say. So it was it was kind of a it all came up at the last second. It was like. Like, oh shit, I like this gig came up and then now I've got to like move everything out of my apartment and, and we're going to Tokyo. And so it was kind of like a scramble at the last minute, you know, to get everything in order. But, but yeah, it all worked out and, and, uh, here I am now. So that's awesome. Are you, um, using a click track live most of the time or none of the time or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, this show is all click and, um, it's really cool. I love working with clicks. Um, just because it, it's like super consistent. Um, and you know, the reason why there needs to be a click is, uh, there, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of things going on, like on stage, there's like lighting cues and there's vocal cues and, and just things have to be like, what I've learned so far from this gig is it's all about like consistency. Like, whereas with the red knots, um, you know, I'm kind of like improvising and we're jamming on stage and kind of like feeling what's going on whereas with this gig it's all about like can i play like the same way every single night and make it so like clear and and like every fill is like you know the same like play it the same way every single night 
And that has been a huge challenge for me. You know, it's, it's like, it requires like this new level of focus that, you know, it's, it's, it's like a test of, you know, your musical maturity just to be able to play like, you know, blah, boom, dig it, doom, oh, and like always commit to that fill. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a really cool challenge. So yeah, it's, everything's to a click. Awesome. Is that with uh, all the musicians have a click or just you? Um, everyone has, uh, a click and, um, I'm really stoked, man, because this is actually the first gig I've ever had like in-ear monitors. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really cool setup. Like I've, I've always had like the wedge on the side, but, um, they gave us in-ear monitors and then we have our own mixer. Like, so each of us has controls for everyone on stage. So, um, it's really cool. Cause I don't have to like, you know, like, Hey, could I have more bass? You know, like I can just do it like right there. Um, so we all have like our own mix and we all have a clip and we can kind of adjust it as as needed nice well kind of going back to the beginning how did you actually just get started in music oh man so um i got started uh around kind of like the end of grade school and i i don't come from a musical family um but with that said like my dad always was was playing music in the house um, so I kind of had that going on in the back of my mind, but I wasn't necessarily into music yet. I was just kind of like absorbing it, I guess. And, uh, so when I was in grade school, um, my best buddy, uh, his name's Ben, um, at, you know, at the time we, we were hanging out all the time. Like we were, we were, you know, just doing everything. Like it was always like, we're always hanging out. So, um, his mom was actually the, like the music teacher, um, at the grade school. So, you know, again, like their, their household was super musical and, you know, I was, I was kind of by hanging out with him, I, you know, I was around her and she was, you know, very inspiring. She was like super, just always got me pumped about music. And, um, so one day she, I guess she bought Ben a drum set and you know, I came over and he's like, dude, I got this drum set. And I was like, cool, man. Like I'd never really touched drums in my life. I never really thought about drumming. And I was like, dude, can I play it? And I sat down and it was just like, <laughs> from then on, I was like, oh my God, this is like the coolest thing ever. And yeah, that's kind of how it all started, I guess. Um, I haven't really thought about that in a long time, but that's, I, I would say that that's like how it kind of, you know, that was like the first time I ever played drums. And it was just ever since I've just been, I, I just love drumming, man. How did you um, develop? I mean, what was the process from you first touching the drum kit to being able to, you know, play on stage and stuff? Well, um, kind of like the way I guess my, my brain works or whatever is I'm just, I'm very like, once, once I'm into something, I, I like obsess over it and I, I really like dive into it. So after that moment, I was just like drums, 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 like all I want to do is drums. And, uh, so I went to, at this point I was like getting ready to go to high school and I decided like, all right, drumming is really cool. I want to check this out. So, um, I, you know, I signed up for like band class and I, I did the whole, the whole thing. So I did like, uh, you know, the, uh, like the wind ensemble or whatever they called it, the concert band. Um, and then I joined, I did marching band. I did, I was like a total band geek. I, I did like drum line and I would do like winter percussion and, um, I mean, it got to a point where like I, what I did was I, I would sign up for, by my senior year, I was, I, I think I was in like two different music classes and then I signed up for a study hall. And what I did was I became like a teacher's aide. And basically what they did was they allowed me to like practice during that hour. So it was cool. Cause like every day in high school, I had like two hours of music and then I'd have an hour where I could practice. And then I would go home and I'd practice on my drum set until like my mom got home from work. And so that was like every day for like, you know, a couple of years. And it was just, um, I was just obsessed, you know, I, I watched like, you know, that was back, back before like YouTube and all that stuff. Um, they had these like drumming DVDs, uh, Hudson music. And, and I would just go and like go to guitar center and buy a drumming DVD and like learn everything I could. Um, you know, I, it was just, I'm just excited about drumming and I, I still am like today and just talking about it kind of brings me back to like how how fun that was to just be a high school kid and just have to worry about drums you know not having to worry about like making a living or music business it was just fun like just 
just raw fun. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's kind of how that started. And then, uh, at the end of high school, I decided, all right, I, I, I think I want to like pursue this as like, you know, what I want to do with my life. So I ended up going to Indiana university and I got a degree in jazz studies and that was an amazing experience. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough about that, that experience. I mean, I got my ass kicked every single day. Um, it's a super competitive music school and, you know, everyone that I was around, they were so much better than me and, and, um, just amazing musicians. And it wasn't just like jazz guys. It was, it was everyone. It was like opera singers and classical musicians and, you know, composers and, um, you know, people like in choir, like, like singers and, um, it was just an amazing experience. The whole music school thing, it, it, it was just kind of life changing for me. Um, so that's, that's kind of the progression, I guess, from, you know, being a kid to going to music school and then, um, uh, you know, then, yeah, it's just been a, it's been a crazy kind of fun ride. So mm-hmm. who were some of your like earliest inspirations and how have they evolved over time? Yeah, there's been, there's been like, definitely a few. Um, so, so the first one is, is, you know, I was, I was talking about Ben, my, my buddy in grade school, like his mom was a huge influence because she, she was the first person to get me like thinking about like musical things. So like, I wasn't drumming at that point. I was like, you know, singing, like she was, we were like in choir and, and, uh, I, I grew up in a Catholic grade school. And, um, so we, you know, I'd like sing at church and things like that. So she, she got me, she was definitely a a huge like motivator. Um, when I got to high school, I had a teacher, his name's Ed Goss and he lives in Indy. He's the owner of uh, bongo boy music and dude, talk about inspiration, man. Like he's the guy that just made me like just flip out at, at different drummers. Um, you know, he, he was like, dude, you have to check out this, this album, like this, you know, this Frank Zappa album. Um, called Joe's Garage. And so he'd like, he'd burn the CD for me and he'd, he'd give it to me and I'd, I'd listen to it and I'd come back and I'm like, oh my God, you know, and, and that's, that's Vinny Kaliuta on drums. If anyone doesn't know that album, you got to check it out. Like drummers, you got to check mm-hmm. out that album. It's, it's so, so awesome. So, um, you know, I, I've just, I've, I've been really lucky because I, there's so many people that have inspired me like that. You know, I've, I've just been around very, inspiring people. Um, you know, Ed Goss, um, my, my high school band director, his name's Mike Nemec. Um, you know, if it wasn't for him, I I wouldn't be doing any of this. Like he, he, it's just another guy where he, he's so passionate about teaching and it just rubs off on you. Um, and if it, if it wasn't for people like that, you know, think like, I'm just one dude. And like, think about how many people, uh, educators get to touch, you know, like how many, how many lives they get to affect. Um, if he had just like phoned it in and just been like, you know, just going to work and like, whatever, like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So it it really, at the end of the day, it almost has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with, um, the people that you surround yourself with, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, I don't, I hope that answers the question. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of uh, a spin off to that question, or who are some of the um, drummers that influenced you? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot. Um, I guess like my first like drumming obsession was was probably Neil Peart. Um, just because I think when you're a kid, you know, you see like the massive drum set, mm-hmm. you know, with the double bass drum pedal and the like the twelve toms or whatever, and like every symbol possible and like a gong drum. And you're like, Oh my God, I want to do that. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, I did that. Like when I was a kid, I was like, I got to get the double bass drum pedal. And like, I would like shed all that stuff. And you know, now I'm like, I never, I never use like a double bass drum pedal. So it's just kind of funny how that works. Like, um, so Neil, Neil Peart, uh, would definitely have, he's like one of the first influences. Uh, Carter Beaufort was a huge, huge influence. Like when I was in high school, Mm -hmm. um, and then, like when I got to Indiana University, I was, you know, studying jazz, and that everything just kind of took a one eighty because I wasn't just listening to, um, 
you know, like rock music, like the stuff that my dad was listening to. I was now listening to like jazz and like funk and world music and um, classical music. And, and um, so my, my like influences kind of changed a lot, but you know, some people that come to mind, like Vinnie Cagliuta, monster player, like he's the guy that can play with Frank Zappa and do all this crazy shit and then turn around and play with Sting and play, and play these pop tunes like more beautiful than any like drummer. I mean, it's just like, yeah, like uh, that 10, 10 Summoner's Tales album is like just it's like a masterpiece of mm-hmm. like being a pop drummer. Um, yeah. And then and then like the, in terms of like the jazz guys, it'd be like Elvin Jones and Tony Williams and uh, Jack Dejanet was a huge influence for me. Like I, I love I love that stuff. Um, you know, like the Keith Jarrett trio kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a hard question just cause there's so much, there, there's so much out there, especially nowadays. Um, right now I'm listening to, uh, to, there's a band called animals as leaders. I, I just got into them. I don't know if you're, do you know about these guys? Yeah. Like, yeah. They're great. To- to- yeah, to- they're, to- 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 they're, it's amazing, dude. Like they're, they're so good. So I've been listening to that a lot and that's been really inspiring me. Um, you know, I'm normally not into like kind of heavier stuff, but, um, but yeah, like it's just really cool. It's really musical. I I like it a lot. Yeah. They do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. Do you have, um, any original music on the horizon you're planning or are you focusing on just what you have going on now or what? Yeah. Um, well back, back home in San Diego, I was, I was playing with, uh, we kind of, I kind of had an original uh, duo with, with a guy named Johnny Tarr and this guy guy is just an amazing human being he's a great guy he's from wales and uh he he has um he kind of has his own like original thing that he brought over from wales and he asked me if i wanted to you know to drum and so it's it was kind of this duo thing so we we had been writing music together um for the past year or so and that's that's been a really nice outlet but um yeah i i don't really have a lot of of kind of original music i'm not really for some reason I haven't really made that like a focus. Uh, Maybe I, maybe I should be doing that. Maybe I should be writing music, but, um, I've really been enjoying kind of, um, I love being the side man. I love being like the, the chameleon. Like I love, I love wearing like the different hats, you know? And I love the idea of like doing a jazz gig on a Tuesday and then like playing with the red, not chili peppers on a Friday. And, you know, like to me, I, I really get off on that. Like I, I love the variety and just kind of trying to adapt to different situations. Um, so do you see yourself more as a tour guy in the future or maybe more like a session guy or would you like to again, do both? Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know if there's a ton of money in being, uh, you know, a, a kind of like a studio guy or a session guy. Like, I don't, I'm not sure if that's like even really a possibility so much in anymore but um i feel like at least right now like it seems as if live playing is kind of where it's at in terms of um you know being able to make a living (laughs) playing music Mm -hmm. um and i just really enjoy playing in front of a a crowd i just think it's really fun um it's it's like a two-way street you know it's um we like in the band we like with the red knots we talk about this all the time how how it's such a two-way street like you could have an amazing, you, you could be feeling great and you go out and you give it like 110%. But if like the, the audience is there and their, their arms are folded and they're just kind of like staring at you, like there's no way that that, that show is going to go well because it is a two way street. And I think that, uh, you know, audiences should kind of keep that in mind that like, it, it definitely is like, it goes both ways. Like you got to give it back. Um, and when that happens, it's such a great feeling. Like w- when you feel connected with the audience, you know, um, that's like when I have the most fun. I think that's when we all have the most fun as musicians, when we see people, um, you know, getting excited about, um, what we're doing and, you know, and when we see that we get excited and we play better and it's like, it's just the cycle that just kind of keeps growing. So it's, it's a cool thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where, where do you kind of see your career? Um, I guess going, where do you see it ending up or where would you like it to end up? <sighs> that's like the ultimate question, man. <laughs> I know. Right. I, I, I have no idea. Um, I, I, I just want to make sure that a ball above everything that I'm doing, you, you know, what makes me happy. And, um, it, to me that that's playing music. So 
I have no idea, you know, I like, for example, I had no idea that I'd be playing in rock of ages, but that's, that's kind of where my life led me now. And, Mm -hmm. um, I had no idea that I would like go on Craigslist one day and like meet up with a tribute band. Like I, you know, like just like none of this stuff you ever, you never, you never like predict it. You just kind of, you prepare and you wait for an opportunity to, to come up and, and you, you take the opportunity. And, um, so as long as I'm, you know, doing music and, and, um, as long as I feel happy, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of all that matters, but I, I don't know. Um, I guess, <laughs> I guess like time will tell, yeah. who knows? So how do you, uh, prepare yourself to be able to take those opportunities? How, how do you, how, how do you prepare to take the opportunity? Right. I guess it's kind of a, a tricky question because you can't prepare for something you don't know is happening. But how do you set yourself up in a position to be able to take opportunities as they arise? Yeah, I think the something that really like pops out at me, like when you ask that, that question is, I think as a musician, especially in 2015, that it's really, really important to be able to be stylistically diverse. What I mean is, like, don't just be the rock guy. I mean, the, you know, there are people that say, like, yeah, you should get really good at, like, one thing and, and let that be your, you know, your, like, identity. But I, I almost disagree. And I, I feel that um, it's really important to be able to do a lot of different things. And, and the reason for that, um, I mean, simply is just that it allows you to take those opportunities. So, like, going back to your question, if I had just, like, taken that like Carter Beaufort DVD and just been like, all right, I'm going to be like the next Carter Beaufort and only do that. Like, like, I, I don't know if, if that is necessarily the best course of action. Whereas, um, you know, if I, if you learn how to play jazz, if you learn how to play funk, like authentically, if you learn how to pick different equipment based on the gig, like, um, you know, bringing a smaller kit, uh, for a jazz gig, you know, bring like the right, the right heads, the right sticks, the right, you know, just being able to be stylistically d- diverse and and to be able to be authentic within those styles, um, I think that that will lead to opportunities. So when those opportunities comes comes up, uh, when they come up, um, you can then take them because you're confident that you can do it. Um, I I, ho- I don't know if that answers the question, but um, you know, I just I, I feel like it's important to be able to um, to do to do a lot of different things um, so that when it comes up, you're you're ready to do it. You know. What's your process like for learning a bunch of different genres and expanding your horizons? Well, um, definitely the key would be listening to music. Um, I know that like seems like an obvious thing, but I think that like in today's world where we're we're like multitasking so much and we have so much going on and like Facebook and like all these, you know, just all these distractions. Um, I think that at the end of the day, you know you, you can't, you can't sound like, uh, you know, Philly Joe Jones. If you don't ever listen to Philly Joe Jones, like you can't, you know, you can't be a jazz musician. If you net, if you don't know the language, if you don't know the vocabulary, um, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, people talk a lot about how music and language are very similar. And it's kind of like, some people say that the best way to learn a language is just to go to the country and start talking to people and like learning how to, to say words and you kind of pick up things so much faster. I think the same thing is true with music. You could like read a book on how to play like jazz time and you could like read the sheet music, but the way faster way is just to listen to music and be like, Oh, that's like, that's the vibe. That's what it's all about. So yeah, that's, that's a way that you can learn different styles. It's just listening to the music and, you know, picking out those things that, that, um, start to, uh, you find, you find kind of similarities. You're like, Oh, this is like the vibe that, you know, if, if this is going on in the music, like this is kind of like the vibe that, that a lot of drummers are taking. So maybe I can like put that in my toolbox. And then when that situation comes up, I can, you know, pull that out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned that you live in San Diego, of course, and you're now in New York. Do you think location impacts your career in different ways? Just, just in general, not even necessarily yeah. your own career. Yeah. Yeah. I think it does. I think it does affect, um, I mean, you, if you, if you want to be making a living, uh, playing music, you kind of have to be where, where things are at. Um, you know, San Diego is, is not 
a major, I'll be honest, like it's not a major music city. Like, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but, um, you know, I've just been very lucky because of, you know, these unique kind of situations that have come up. But, um, you know, if you want to be, you know, I, I think it's, it's just really, it's really important to be in, in a, like you could be the best drummer, you know, in like Arkansas and that's amazing. And that's great. And maybe you're, you know, maybe you're like working a lot in Arkansas and that's awesome, but you're going to increase your chances so much more if you're in a, in a situation where there's more musicians around you and there's more venues and there's more opportunities for shows and, and things like that. So, you know, it's not like the only thing that matters, but, um, you know, I think it's definitely pretty important. Yeah. It's just one more thing to add to your, you know, I guess toolbox, like you say. Right. Uh, what are your what are your future plans coming up? Well, uh, I've got this Rock of Ages gig until September, and mm-hmm. um, that's awesome, by the way. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited. Thanks, man. It's it's a really fun opportunity, and I'm really growing a lot from it. It's cool. But uh, after that, I'll be coming back to San Diego, sunny San Diego. I'm so stoked about San Diego. It's just like it's the, just the most beautiful place ever. And uh, mm-hmm. so anyway, I'll be back with the Red Knot Chili Peppers when I get back. Um, we uh, you know, we'll keep traveling and, and, um, I'm kind of working on, I can't really talk about it too much, but I'm, I'm working on uh, kind of like an educational, uh, product at the moment. And I'm really excited to be working on that. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff in the next couple months. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be really cool when it comes out and, and, uh, it's just like a fun side project, uh, that I've been kind of passionate about. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see, man. Like, I don't know, uh, we'll, who knows what the future holds. Yeah. It seems like with you, uh, you're getting a lot of, um, I guess, things out of left field that that are really awesome. Yeah, like I feel like I feel like that's how life works, isn't it? Like I feel like that happens with everyone. Is it's, um, you know, just if you think back to your life and you pick you pick one like aspect, like you know, let's say like like your job or like your girlfriend or whatever like the situation is, and you look back and you kind of trace it, you're like dude, if I hadn't met like that one guy in the coffee shop, like he wouldn't have talked to the one dude that, you know, like, it's like, it's yeah. just funny. Like that's how everything works. Mm-hmm. And, and when you think uh, about it, it's crazy to think that anyone reaches any level of success ever. Cause it's yeah, just like it, such a yeah. needle in a haystack kind of thing. Well, it, it's funny you, you said that because I just read a book called outliers and it's by Malcolm Gladwell. And, and it's actually a really interesting book. Cause it's very, it's very like, uh, how do I say it? Like it's, it's almost kind of like controversial. Basically this guy says success has nothing to do, almost nothing to do with yourself. And like he's saying like, like, you know, talent and, um, you know, ability almost has zero to do with success. And he makes all of these arguments like that, you know, basically it's about who you're around and it's about opportunities and it's about, um, luck basically, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, if you're just in the right place at the right time, you know, and, you know, and you're prepared, of course, then, you know, he basically studied all of these, like these outliers, but in other words, he studied all these super successful people and it's like, well, how did these guys get to where they are? And he, he kept finding over and over again that it's not really them. It's, it's their situation. It's their parents. It's their, their, where they're from, like their, you know, their, their culture. Um, so yeah, like it's it's funny, like you you kind of mentioned that it's, um, I th- I think it's it's all about other people and and mm-hmm. um, at the same time it's 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 about being a good person, like being being a positive human being and being excited about life and and wanting to inspire other people, and if you're a good person to be around and you treat other people good, and you know and and you're fun to be with, like like. I'll never be like a Vinnie Caliuta or, you know what I mean? But like, if, if I can go to a gig and just like make people at least like smile or something and have a good time, Mm -hmm. like, I feel like that's way more important than being like the best drummer on the planet. Like that doesn't really matter. Like if you think about it, like, um, if you want to hire someone on a gig, who's like the first person you think of, you usually think of like your friend, right? You think of like, like, who do I want to have fun with on this gig? You don't think like, oh, I want to hire like the the hottest 
you know, badass, like most awesome, you know, like, no, you don't think that you think like, who's going to, who am I going to have a lot of fun with on the gig and who's like going to make things like stress-free, you know? Yeah, Um, exactly. So yeah, I think that's, it's kind of a mixture of, of those, those two things, like being a really good person and then just being surrounding yourself with people that, that lift you up and inspire you and, and keep you positive. So yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's funny thinking about the outliers thing. You think of someone like uh, Zuckerberg inventing Facebook. I mean, if somebody did that exact same thing now, it wouldn't. It would. It would be nothing. Exactly, just, and that's the that's, time. Yeah. Yep. It's it's all the timing. That's that's kind of exactly what this guy is saying. I mean, he was talking about Bill Gates and how um, he just so happened to be you know born in that area where era where it was like if he had been a little bit later, he would have missed it, and if he would have been a little bit early, he would have been like too you know, it would have been just, it just would have been too early for that. And, um, he kind of goes in detail how like he got access to this like computer that back then it was super expensive to, to run this computer. Like, you know, thinking back like 20, whatever, 30 years, like he just got special access to this room that he wasn't supposed to have access to. And because of that, he got all of these hours logged, whereas everyone else would have to pay like all this money to be able to do it. And so again, like, that's what he's saying is like, because of that random, kind of thing that happened to him you know look at look at where he where he is now so mm-hmm. um yeah i think we as humans like you were saying that could be controversial because we don't want to think that it's completely out of our control you know yeah like i when i was reading the book i was kind of like man this is kind of depressing because it makes me feel like it doesn't really matter what i do but yeah then, I, then I, your goal I, becomes yeah. like how do i put myself in the right place at the right time yeah totally man and and that's you know very right, up, yeah. up to chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't think that should be. Yeah. I mean, how can you even predict something like that? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's going to happen. Well, do you have right. uh, anything you'd like to promote and, um, and let us know where we can find you online so we can keep up with all the stuff you got going on? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, you can visit my website. Uh, it's Steve such Um, yeah, that's about it. And thanks so much for having me, man. And this was really fun. Um, I, I I appreciate you having me on the show and everything. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much for uh, for doing it. Thanks, man. Yeah, awesome talk. Thank you so much, Steve. And um, I'll keep in touch. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you soon, man. Thank All you. All right. See ya.